Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 90 where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net I'll do my best to answer them let's get right to it this first one's called OMG Chris Hadfield blocked me lol check this out Chris Hackfield blocked me on Twitter after calling him out for stealing someone else's artwork about the hole in space. I... W <laughs> I will wear this block as a badge of honor. And I'll be darned if that is exactly what happened. Uh, you have been blocked from following uh, Commander Hatfield and viewing Commander Hatfield's tweets. Uh, and they also recommend NASA and National Geographic. That, of course, is interesting because the National Geographic piece on Flat Earth, which they shot a couple months ago in Los Angeles with yours truly, will be uh, uh, premiering soon. So, yeah, that was from James. Thank you, James, for being blocked and, and sending me the screenshot of that. That's awesome. It's great. Moving on. Let's... Go to YouTube reaches a new low. That's the title. Uh, Mark, look at this. YouTube shows this link to the Encyclopedia Britannica moon landing page on Flat Earth videos. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so what they do is now, and it's one of the things that was actually in uh, that congressional committee. They said they were going, YouTube knows they, they make money off, off YouTube videos or um uh, flat earth videos a lot of them so what they said they would do is they would go ahead and make put links right below the video not very big honestly they're they're smaller than like cigarette warning labels to wikipedia so this one yeah is linked to apollo space program and it's one of uh Jaronism's video and then yeah yeah very very interesting very interesting. That's from Andrew. Thank you. And we'll be seeing more of that. Well, it doesn't really matter that much, though. I mean, YouTube does not want to block Flat Earth videos. People, when they get into Flat Earth, watch so much YouTube. It's like, are you kidding? You know, that's it. we're a cash cow for them right now. And they know it. So they can block other things like false flags and all sorts of fake shootings and stuff like that. But they, they blocking Flat Earth is, does not help them at all. So it's kind of a, it, they're kind of riding the line with us. Moving on, this one's called Flat Smack Stuff. Hi Mark, while listening to you last show, there was a guy that was talking about how he was showing info to people a flat smack thing. Do you have anything like that or maybe have this stuff to pass along? Thanks, Kirk. Yeah, as a matter of fact, what this guy needs is the 12 slides and that was because one of our guys, uh, Just Jack, he said he could convince anyone in 12 slides or less and he has them on his machine so i will uh, i will send this guy the 12 slides and if you guys want the, f the 12 slides just let me know and i will shoot them to you this one's called the five questions hi mark can you please send me the five science questions thank you adam from wolverhampton england wolverhampton i have never heard that name that's interesting uh, yes, if anyone wants the five questions that, that I mentioned that I did for the uh, German television teams or network ZDF when they contacted me about the Georgetown physicist who wanted, they got this guy to debate me and they asked me to come up with five science questions that they would videotape me and shoot it off to him. So I gave them the five questions. We recorded it on Skype and then they sent it to him and that was it. There was no debate because there's no way any scientist can answer those five questions. So if you guys want them, copy of them. I mean, it's also if you subscribe to my channel, uh, it's it, when you go into my channel, if you're already a subscriber, the speech where I gave the five questions up in Edmonton, Canada, that's that that automatically plays. So but if you want the the transcripts of them, I'm, I'm happy to do it. In fact, this particular we're going to be ripping through a whole bunch of emails here real quick because this is there's a lot of requests for slides here. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll just I'll just mention the names. Twelve slides from Adam. Hi, Mark. Can you please please send me the twelve slides. Thanks from Adam. Okay, got that one. This one's called Twelve Slides from Jap ninety two. Hello, Mark. Can you please send me the twelve slides? Best regards, Jap. Yep. Send it to him. This one's from Chris. 
Please send me the 12 slides to convert somebody to flat earth. Thanks. I don't know if they're a miracle cure, guys. I, I don't. I mean, I mean, they're good slides, but honestly, you could use any of David Weiss's stuff from DITRH channel. And most of the, I use a whole, I, don't get me wrong, I'm sure Just Jack's slides are great, fantastic, brilliant, a must see. But you could also go into any of my Strange World episodes, and the first 50 or 60 slides are all DITRH, and those are top notch too. So, anyway, that was from Chris. We're just going to punch through these. This one's called 12 Slides. Yes, I want them. Thanks, Mark. That's from Mike Dufour. And, the, and you guys said, why are you rattling off these? Well, because people write in. They want to hear themselves in the thing. So it's like, okay, so Mike gets credit. Mike Dufour, D-U-F-O-U-R. Uh, this one's called Prep Guide and 12 Slides. Hey, Mark, just wondering if you could send me the Prep Guide and also the 12 Slides. Thanks, Tom, otherwise known as Wizzy Hizzy. And yeah, uh, the Prep Guide. I wrote a survival guide for long-term power outages. It doesn't have anything specifically to do with zombies or meteors or some sort of virus. It is just a prep guide to, it bet, meant mostly for Western civilization, notably the United States and Canada, but it, it'd probably work in Europe, uh, although there's less guns in Europe. Uh, but you could, you could ask for that. It's called Empty Shelves. It's free. It's two megs. Just say, I want your prep guide if you think the world's going to end. And by the, if you get it, print it out. Don't don't be a putz and, and leave it on your cell phone and be like scrolling through. It's like, I, do I have enough battery life to finish the guide? Because you really need a printed copy. I know you don't, nobody prints things, but anyway. This one's called My New Channel. Mark, I've been looking into your channel and I have found great content of yours with Creative Commons license. However, some of them are not licensed as Creative Commons and I would like to grant your permission to use them if you don't mind. Thank you and keep up the good work. Cheers, Yahia. And yeah, you guys, look, if it's on my channel, I've never thrown a strike at anybody for anything. Not even close. Uh, the closest thing, I'm sorry, that's not entirely true. The closest thing I ever got was a mistaken identity thing where uh, one of our fellow flat earthers thought that I was a deadbeat dad living in Boston and that he saw me on closed circuit television and so he recorded that and put it up and said, this is Mark Sargent, the Flat Earther. It's like, look looked nothing like me. The only thing that was remotely close is he was white. That was it. And so I sent a thing off to YouTube and I said, look, this is not me. And YouTube actually said, oh, you got to send a copy of your driver's license. And so I was like, okay. So I scanned my driver's license and shot it off to him. And that was it. They, they said, yeah, it's not him. So thank you for at least dealing with that. This one's called Five Questions, Please. Mark, thank you for what you do for the FE community. Sincerely, Sean Dennis. Yep, I sent him the five questions. This one's called Another Request Email. Mark, okay to read on air. Your biggest fan here. Just writing to request the five questions, prepper guide, and the 12 pictures. Thank you for what you do. Also, the video that woke me up with Celebrate Truth's video, the biggest lie ever told to mankind. I would recommend it to your viewers as a video to show others because it is uh, a gradual ease into the subject of flat earth. Thanks again. Stay flat. That's from Bobby Nordgren. And this one's called 12 Pictures Survival Guide. I'm sorry. The, the reason why, okay, you're going, why is there so many this time around? It's because it takes me a while, takes several weeks for me to, to I, I'm backed up. You know, this is all the way back to September 9th. And so back in August, I did a show where there was quite a few requests and it just becomes cyclical where more and more people, it's like, wow, if all these people are asking for the survival guide and the 12 pictures and the coast to coast interviews and whatever else I've got, then uh, I should ask for it too. And so people do. And so, but I have, I got to, I got to acknowledge the people. I'm not going to ignore you. And I'm going to keep doing the emails. I'm sorry I missed last week. I was traveling to the film festival thing for Behind the Curve. The documentary, you can check that out at behindthecurvefilm.com. Uh, and I will be probably traveling more for various things in the future. In fact, I'm doing the conference. If you guys don't know what the conference is, it's the giant Flat Earth Conference, which is happening in Denver in two weeks and change. So check it out at fe2018.com. Okay, anyway, this one's called 12 Pictures Survival Guide. Hi there, Mark. Hope you're doing well. I have used your videos to introduce Flat Earth to my family. However, I would like to ask for your 12 pictures so I can introduce my work colleagues as well. Also, I could request your survival guide. That would be much appreciated. Thank you, 
God bless and stay flat. Very welcome. This one's called, hey, 12 slides. Hey, Mark, love what you do. Can you please send me those 12 slides you have mentioned? Cheers from Australia, not down under. That's from Matt Manu, M-A-N-O-O. -O. Yep, he got them. This one's called Flat Earth Subaru. Hi, Mark, I'm wearing your name tag from Raleigh as I write this. Oh, right, because uh, this is uh, uh, Jim from uh, uh, Canada. And I sent him, he said, can, can I, can I get some, some souvenirs? And it's like, okay. So I signed some stuff from the conference from last year and I sent it to him and I give, yeah, I do give, I, try, I love everything that gets sent to me. Really, really appreciate it. You know, my physical address is on every video I make and you guys can send me anything you want. Uh, but I can't collect too big a pile. So eventually I autograph as much stuff as I can and, and give it away because it helps spread the word, the, the flat earth word, word. And what would I do with it? It was just sitting here with me. Uh, anyway, this one's, uh, he says, hi, Mark, I'm wearing your name tag from Raleigh as I write this. Thanks again. I've red pilled a lot of people to F E and, uh, Q. Oh, and Q. Is it possible the 2005 Subaru with the Ontario license? It's flat has seen is seen more than any other vehicle maybe next to the tesla i have to sell my beloved xt it's uh at 71 it's time for an automatic i'd put an ad in something something in north bay to trade for a five speed no bites yet i'll keep the plate survival guides welcome uh and those 12 picks uh peace out hopefully i send them to you jim hopefully this one's called please send 12 pictures survival guide paper air traffic controller coast to coast interview etc and that's from Donald Ray. Awesome. This one's called five question marks and 12 slides. Hey, Mark, my name is Dave from Ontario, Canada. I want to let you tell you that I love you and appreciate your work. I, on occasion, uh, try to show my family facts against the ball earth. My problem is I get flustered when trying to explain the facts of my family. Even right now, as I'm writing, as you think of some crazy comedian, to shorten this up, would like it if you could give me the five questions and 12 slides. My phone number is this. If you need it, thanks, and keep up the great material. That's from Dave Gardner. This one's called 12, 12 Photos from Just Jack. There, Just Jack gets a shout out. Hi, Mark. I would love to have a copy of the 12 photos to prove FE. Thank you. And that's from Tammy Tennyson. And Tammy sent me a picture. Oh, that's nice. Hi, Tammy. I'm waving at your picture. That's a little weird. Yeah. This one's called Slides. Mark, please don't read on air. Okay. Why not? Why wouldn't I read this on air? It just, it just says, would you please send me the 12 slides and the survival guide when you have time? Thank you. And even the name isn't your real name. So why wouldn't I say, why wouldn't I read it on air? I mean, if it's sensitive... <laughs> sensitive information sure i mean i'm not going to give out your email i don't give out the email to everybody but the email is is just a generic email whatever okay this one's actually not a 12 slides it's called antarctica mark please look at this it's called it's a youtube video called antarctica scientists released the most accurate high resolution map yet yep i have checked that out and it's very very cool this one's called 12 slides and five questions in fact there's there's nothing in the body it's just from Karen M. Not even a thank you. <laughs> That's fine. You guys can do that. I, I don't mind at all. Uh, this one's called Seven Flat Earth Experiments Documentary, Latin America. Hey, Mark, just in case you haven't seen this yet, please out the, check out this documentary and let everybody know what you think. Just finished watching this. It was uploaded in March of 2018. It's in Spanish, but it is narrated in English, and I found it very interesting. In summary, they had several professional overseers, geographer, cartographer, uh, Mauro Diaz, as well as a civil engineer and geotechnical Paulo Cesar Para, who were quite sure that the Earth was spherical, as they had always been taught and believed. But in the end, the test uh, that they witnessed firsthand made them rethink everything they were taught. Thanks, Kevin. Yep, I know. Uh, it's the Convex Earth, the documentary. It's actually pretty good. The first hour of it is, is actually pretty good. The second hour of it, though, falls apart. It's just a mess in the second part. It just feels like a, an ancient aliens knockoff and a, a South American version of it. This one's called 12 Slides to Change a Friend's Mind. Hey, mate, love your YouTube stuff. Could you please send me the 12 Slides thing to help me convince Globeheads that the Earth is flat and any other info you may 
have and want to send. I'm from Australia and added a pic of a $5 note you may like. Apparently, defacing the Queen's property is a jailable offense, but every note I get leaves with a custom stamp I had made. It's worth it if I can awaken just one sheep that believes we live on a globe. And that's from uh, Friendless People. Nice. Thank you. And yeah, it's, that's cool. I love, you know, put it on money. Sure, why not? Lots of people. Have, I mean, it's not a new thing. People have been doing the the money stamping thing for years with with different things. But it's kind of it's kind of cool because it does travel around. Money does travel. It's kind of fun. I don't know how many people look at cash. Cash isn't as great as it used to be. Obviously, there's so everything's electronic. But still, it's kind of fun. This one's called Twelve Picks and Coast to Coast. Hi, Mark. Please send me items mentioned in the subject. Love the show and appreciate all you do for the Flat Earth Truth. Thank you, John from Wheeling, West Virginia. Happy to do it. Moving on. This one's called Mark, or it's called Burj Khalifa. Mark, watch the sunset twice from the world's tallest building. Can you please explain me this? Uh, yeah. I can. It's still just going away in the distance. In fact, anyone that says that, oh yeah, I can watch the sunset twice. I can I can watch it once, and then I can go up in a tall building and watch it again. Well, you don't need to go up in a tall building. That's the weird thing. All you have to do is zoom in with an HD camera. So when the sun looks like it's actually sinking below the horizon from the beach, just bend down on one knee and you know from like three feet up and crank up the zoom. Hey, look at that. The sun pops up. And we see video after video of that. And eventually it just keeps going away. This one's called Info. Hi, Mark. Heard you mention a woman from Fort Lauderdale who wrote a book, Flat Earth for Dummies. I live in Davie, Florida, in Broward County, five miles west of her. Can you please pass my info to her, uh, Michael and Ruth? Uh, I'm the one who inquired about a meeting down here. Thanks. Yeah, it, the, the easiest way to do this isn't isn't to ask me for people's contact info. It's just either to start a meetup on your own or go to meetups that are out there. All you have to do is type in Flat Earth Meetup. And I've got a list of them now. It's about 200 deep in my playlists on YouTube. It's just called Flat Earth Meetups. And you can see all the ones that are out there. And I, I'm pretty sure I've missed a bunch. You know, these are just the ones that are sent to me. The people saying, hey, can you do a promo on your channel? Or can you mirror my promo on your channel? And yes, I'm happy to do that. If you make a Flat Earth promo video and you all you have to do is say, can you please put this on your channel? I will do it in two seconds. Well, I'm, depending on what I'm doing. But I will put it up on my channel and or I'll make my my own version of it. And hopefully and every, everybody that goes to these meetups, uh, they have a lot of fun. And we've had several hundred just in the United States and Canada alone. This one's called Flat Earth Perth. Hi, Mark. Longtime fan. Just finished an interesting observation of Cape Naturalist Lighthouse where 110 meters of curvature was missing. Feel free to mirror or discuss on your show. I can be contacted at blah, 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 long phone number or by email. And that's uh, regards Jamie. Flat Earth Perth. Nice. In Australia. Very, very cool. This one's called... We're going to rattle through these. There's like eight of them 12 slides greeting from st john virgin islands the 12 slides seems to be a smart idea please forward them to me so i can share them with others hope the hurricane seasons continue to be kind to us here this year preparing for the next cross island foot race in february now the hare and the tortoise will be the theme and largely displayed on the t-shirt in 2019 remember the flat earth race t-shirt i sent you a year and a half yeah i'll be sure to save you an xlt with hare and tortoise thanks for the 12 slides peter in the virgin islands yeah peter not only did he uh, uh send me t-shirts from the virgin islands you guys can send me whatever t-shirt you want i will try to wear them on patricia's show or when i go out and do things uh but he, he also got it. It was really, really cool. And I didn't know you could do custom flat earth license plates in the Virgin Islands. And he did. And you guys can do it yourself. You know, I do a flat earth license plate compilation every month. In fact, the new one's going to come out here in about three days for November. And you, whatever you can do with six, seven or eight letters, depending on what state or province you're in, because you can only do vanity plates in the United States and Canada. And, uh, you know, mine on my car is It's Flat, I-T-S-F-L-A-T. But there's all sorts of abbreviations for flat or flat earth or it, just take it back. There's tons and tons of no curve. Uh, there's, in fact, the, the one that, that came out recently was 8, eight 
P mile two, which is eight per mile, eight inches per mile squared, which is awesome. So thank you, Peter. Hopefully you're still listening. This one's called 12 slide. Hello, Mark. This is Miguel from New Jersey. Can you please send me the 12 slide zip file? Thank you. And keep in flatting. P.S. Are there any meetups in New Jersey? Thanks for the info. Yeah, there's meetups in Jersey and there's meetups in New York. In fact, uh, the there's a bunch of people that are going to be going to the New York City showing of Behind the Curve. And you can check that out. It's in New York City at in Chelsea, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know Manhattan very well, but you can check that out. It's, it's the um, Just go to BehindTheCurveFilm.com and look at the showings that are coming up. Remember, it's not out officially. It's just going to film festivals. But if you want to catch it early before general release, uh, go to that if you get a chance. I know that uh, DITRH are going, is going with people, and Zulu One is going. I think CC is going. But anyone in the New York area, have uh, have fun with that. And remember, not a pro flat earth movie, but it's not necessarily against it either. It is fair and balanced. This one's called High Mark Flate Flate Earth 12 Pictures. Thanks, Leon. And that's from Leo Jar. And uh, that's all he said. So that's cool. This one's called 12 Picks. Please. Hey, Mark, could you please send me the 12 picks you spoke of from Just Jack? As of the writing of this email, I have not heard the interview you did with Just Jack, but heard your email pos- podcast, and it seemed like every email had the same theme, the 12 picks that can convert the world. <laughs> I know, he's going to be famous because of this eventually, because he came up with these 12 slides. Even though, come on, they, they, we've had tons and tons and tons of slides and memes. He just picked 12 that I... Anyway, it'll be great. Uh, he said in a giant announcer type voice, yeah, anyway, uh, thanks in advance. By the way, I, t- t- I too blame you for ruining my comfortable yet mind-nagging slumber party in the Matrix. Uh, you and a friend at work challenged me to look beyond the curve, and after three years of independent research, I can say, yep, it's flat. Keep up the flat out good work, Mark. That's from Doug. Very welcome, Doug. This one's called Photos, Slides, and Five Questions. Mark, send all you can send. Have, please. I am in France and always wonder why the satellite dishes for television are always pointing to the horizon. If Earth is round somewhere, they should point upward somewhere, shouldn't they? Thanks, Eugene. Ah, they should. This one's called 12 Picks. Go figure. Mark, please send the 12 picks and the five questions. Like you said before, one doesn't believe the flat earth until they do. Disprove it. Thanks. Ken Brown. Welcome, Ken. Holy smokes. I got a lot of emails. This one's called five questions. That's it. It's from LG Homeblad. Yep. Here you got the five questions. This one's called 12 slides request. Hey, Mark, I was interested in receiving the 12 slides. If you could send it, I'd appreciate it. Thanks in advance. Proudly keeping it flat since 2016. Dennis Markakis. Markakis. Hmm. This one's called Survival Guide. That's a new one. And 12 photos from Just Jack. Dear Mark, I just watched and listened to your Flat Earth Q&A emails 84 in which you mentioned the Survival Guide and 12 photos from Just Jack. Please send me both when you are able. If you could... it could save you some work if you made these and other items available for people to download directly then you would not have to take time to send them by email just thought thank you paul yeah i know and eventually i mean people will will share them and send them to each other that's kind of why i'm sending them out there otherwise what happens is people email me here it's just as quick they'll say hey where can i get the where can i download it and it's like okay well it takes me literally the same amount of time to send you the link to where they might be downloaded to actually just send you the file i don't mind I don't mind. Gives me a chance to interact with people. This one's called Just to Show You I'm Legit. Mark, you can be my witness that I actually do what I say I do. Here's my custom blueprints I sketched up last year. Thanks. That's from Jake. Yeah, cool. Awesome. This one's called Thanks for the Videos. Consider me a warrior for this truth until my dying day, which, by the way, is not going to be anytime soon. And that is literally the title of the video. And that's Love, Daniel Robbins, Engineer and Training. Cool. He left me a cell phone and his email address. And... Very cool. 
This one's called Jupiter, Saturn, and Other Bodies. Hello, Mark. It impresses me that you have always had your email and phone available. As a regular guy, I find your videos provoke thought. I just recently flew overseas, and at 34,000 feet, you can see in all directions for hours of flight. Flat. What troubles me, though, is I have a big telescope, a really big one, and I have watched the spheres of Jupiter and Saturn rotate with my own eyes. How do they and other locals fit into your proposed view? Thanks for listening, XE, otherwise known as XE Rider. Uh, yeah, it's just a planetarium display system. That's all it is. I mean, again, you go to a planetarium, you can see Jupiter Jupiter rotating there if it's a good planetarium, probably built you know in the 90s. The 70s ones, I, I don't think do that, though. I mean, it's just a stationary Jupiter. You see, like, the spot, the, the red spot, and it never moves. Uh, but, yeah, it's just a display system. We can do this now. It's, it's just, This is not hard to do. We just can only do it on a much, much smaller scale. So, and I know, look, if you're a local, and, and I trust me when I say this, any amateur astronomer is going to have a tough time. Because, and I've talked to them because they, they're just, you know, they stare at something long enough with their big telescope, you know, that they have sitting in the corner of their room. And eventually, but, you know, you stare at something long enough like that, you're going to believe it. And it's going to be, you're going to defend it. And he does. This one's called The Sun. Hi, Mark. I'm new to Flat Earth and I'm starting to see the truth of it. I just watched one of your Clues videos that referenced several movies. Have you seen Logan's Run? It's a good one that came out in the early 1970s. Yes, I have seen Logan's Run. Uh, very, very cool. It's from 1976, as a matter of fact, based on the 1967 book of the same name. Uh, although in the in the uh, the 60s book, the 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 maximum lifespan was I think 20, 20. 20 or 21 and the the movie version for obvious reasons uh they put the cap at 30 and the concept was fascinating still is fascinating and it won special effects for its day of course they were all just blown away the very next year because in 1977 that's when star wars came out but in 1976 when logan run came out the, the concept was could you create a utopia with given technology technology that we have now you know, and it was, it was like a, it was a domed technology. It was a domed civilization at, at like a post-apocalyptic thing where the lifespan of anyone was capped at 30. They just told, they put little, little crystals in their hands. They said at 30 years old, you have to go into this chamber and we'll send you to this glorious death where you're reincarnated. Right. But you're capped out at the age of 30 and you're saying, okay, why would you cap them out at the age of 30? And the reason is because you, if uh, you have a lifespan that's artificially capped at 30, you have almost no health care issues. Uh, of course, you, you'd have to talk about genetic manipulation to make sure there was no birth defects, but long-term health effects that, you know, like you know, as the body starts to get older and, and things break down like a car, that doesn't happen. You know, you're swapping, you know, basically everybody's driving a new car. There are no older cars on the road. And that's, that was amazing. And so they let machines do most of the work and it was a leisurely type of world where everybody enjoyed themselves all the time. And the quality of life was, was really embraced. Fascinating, fascinating. And I won't get into too much in the plot that the reason why it's called Logan's Run is somebody figures out that uh, the, the, the 30 year cap is artificial and they freak out because remember our natural instinct is not to die. People run away from death and you know, a few people do. That's why they call them run runners, people that don't want to want to die the glorious death at the age of 30. They um, they run. Anyway, it's a long story, but check it out if you get a chance. It's a fascinating uh, concept. Uh, the, it would, Logan's Run, 1976. Interesting, interesting movie. About, a you know, could you build a utopia now and what would you do? And this was their idea. Anyway, sorry, getting to my question, I'm having a hard time grasping the sunrise, sunset part of it. Do you have any videos that address how this works? Thanks, Dave. Yeah, good. so many people that were making great sunrise, sunset videos, but go to DITRH, that channel, DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Uh, the abbreviation knows what he uses and he has some wonderful ones. So does uh, Zeteticism.com done by Jeffrey Grupp. And there's others out there. The, the sunrise and sunset, not hard. They're just tiny objects. The sun and the moon travel around us. This one's called 12 Pictures, Please. Mark, we spoke on the phone in the summer of 2015 <laughs> after I left you a voicemail. Thanks for all you do. Chris from Kansas City. Yeah. 
Yep, I do. People do call the phone number. The phone number works. That phone is sitting on the ground right now. I Most of the time, I do not answer it uh, because people, as you know, flat earth conversations take a while. People don't want to talk for three minutes. They want to talk for half an hour. And a lot of the time, there's some days the phone just doesn't stop ringing. It just rings and rings and people go to voicemail. Lots of people don't leave, leave voicemails. In fact, you get a lot of people that will call the first time, hear my voicemail, because it's just me saying you've reached Mark Sargent, blah, blah, blah. And they freak out. It's like, what? It's a real number. And, it's, and they realize they, they don't even know what to say. So then they hang up and they call back like a couple minutes later. And it's like, okay, now I'm going to leave my voicemail, which is cool. And so, and lots of people, again, I appreciate all the voicemails. I listen to every single one of them. And luckily the voicemail caps out at uh, what, three, three, four, five minutes, something like that. This one's called 12 slides. Mark, could you be so kind to send them to me? Thanks, buddy. That's from Dale. This one's called slides, five questions from email answers number 84. Hi, Mark. I would love the slides, the five science questions from Georgetown and the survival guide that you offer in the email answers show. I wonder how to get more involved. I came to Flat Earth earlier this year when watching the lunar eclipse on my birthday from Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. Yeah, we were just out there. A friend had kind of side whispered to me, guess what? I got a mind blower for you. It's flat. It. I just kind of went, okay, that's nice and walked away. Thank goodness he said that because while I was watching the moon at sunrise, my mind went, nope, I'm an engineer. His words came back to me and I've spent this year learning and looking, taking pics from trips, etc. My engineering background made me really want to dive in and also I came out of a very popular large cult and see that Flat Earth is treated with some of the same tactics as other deceptions. Would love to talk to you sometime. I think Flat Earth is one of the most exciting topics I've seen in a long time. Yeah, absolutely it is. It just makes me totally laugh that I came out of the cult being red-pilled by the Book of Job and I missed the Flat Earth connection in Job 38 when that was what smacked me in the forehead and woke me to up to the truth. I know it's not easy to be on the red pilling side. I lost all my family becoming a Christian, but my family in Christ is amazing. So, so thankful for you and Rob Skiba. I haven't been able to keep up with who is who uh, and all the YouTubers, which one came first, etc. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go down that road. I just listened, watched, and went, yep. God bless and thank you. And that's from Carrie. She left her phone number. P.S. If you ever need a double... I know your doppelganger. I think he can be converted. Ha ha. That's so weird because she's the second person that says that I've got a doppelganger. A doppelganger. <laughs> I'm running around out there. In fact, I had a good friend of mine out in Colorado that said that uh, he, he could have sworn he saw me in a Home Depot, and it, but it wasn't me. So I don't know. Maybe I've got some clones walking around. This one's called Five Questions. That's it. It's from Tony Ferreira. Very welcome. This one's called 12 Slides to Convince Anyone. Hi, Mark. Love your work. Thank you, sir. Can you send me the 12 slides, please? Thank you, Thomas. Yep. I sent those off. This one's called 12 Pictures. Hello, Mark. I've heard you talking about the 12 Pictures. Can you email them to me? Thank you very much, Joe. Yep. I sent those off. This one's called, wow, they are grasping at straws at this point. And uh, yeah, the Sun in the U the Sun newspaper in the UK ran an article called Dozens of Mysterious Radio Bursts from Outer Space Detected by Alien Hunting Artificial Intelligence. No. This one's called Torque the Line. Mark, can you please promote this experiment? The FE community needs it. And let me click on it real quick. It's called Torque the Line Experiment. 103 subscribers. And uh, I would promote it, but there's nothing about Flat Earth in here. So somebody check that out and let me know if, if this guy has anything to do with Flat Earth or he's trying to debunk it either way. This one's called 12 Slides. Mark, can you please send me the 12 slides? Heard you talking about them. My 15-year-old has friends he is talking to about Flat Earth. Thanks, Teresa. Very welcome, Teresa. This one's called Strange Pick of Flat Earth Used for Hurricane Florence. Hi, Mark. I like your work. Did, does this look correct to you? I tweeted this today to our national broadcaster. And I will take a look at that later. 
This one's called Flat Earth Music Video. I just finished. Uh, it's from Anonymous Photographer. Mark, I emailed you a year ago with a teaser for a full-length doc I planned to make, but inevitably life got in the way. I continued to accumulate all this footage and a desire to do something with it, so I found this song and threw some of mine and others' footage together to accompany it. Still hard to believe. I actually believe the Earth is flat, but alas, ain't no one proved dat curve. He actually typed in dat, D-A-T. My flight lapse video certainly never showed any curvature correction. What a fun puzzle everyone is solving. Cool. This one's called Comp Doc. Hey, Mark, I think I've managed to back a bigger picture type comp doc that people may appreciate. I want to let you know after a long night, I've managed to get part three of four uploaded and part four is coming right after. Here's a link to part one. Love and thanks, plain permaculture. All right, I'll check that out. This one's called, What's Good, Mark? <laughs> oh, it's from Hawaii. Aloha, Mark. I just wanted to let you know you ruined my life as well. Well, not really. Was wondering from a prepper's view, do you practice any martial arts or any kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat defense courses in preparation for a SHTF event? What kinds of martial arts do you think would be the best to study? I, myself, as a child, teen, practiced Filipino martial arts, weapons, and empty hand. Now, as an adult, I used to wrestle, and now into Muay Thai, which is the BJJ slash MMA. Anyways, just wanted to hear your insight. By the way, can you please send me your empty shelves, survival guide, five questions, Jack's photos, and coast-to-coast -coast interview? I wanted to let you know. It's you and people like you inspire and captivate regular closet FE people like me. I know there are many of us. Thank or take care and God bless Jay. And yes, I responded to him and sent him all that stuff. As far as martial arts go, uh, when it comes to the end of the world scenario, uh, keep it simple. I mean, basic, basic uh, self-defense courses more than anything uh, because most people for the first remember this is the united states and canada applies europe and uk not as much but everybody's bringing weapons to the table here right hand-to-hand -hand combat is almost never going to happen just straight up hand-to-hand -hand. i mean literal the literal sense hand-to-hand -hand, like mma everybody is gonna have a freaking crowbar or a hammer or a machete or and that's that's if you get into just the hand to hand weapons. In fact, there, in my survival guide, I've got a whole section uh, called "When the Bullets Run Out," because that's what everyone's going to first. They are going to shoot first and shoot often. People are going to exhaust their ammunition apply, uh, supplies fairly quickly, and then after that, they're going to be. It's going to be what you see in the movies. People are going to be carrying around the biggest thing they can swing, and you know, they're going to be weirding, wearing weird body armor. You know, homemade stuff, you know, stuff that's cobbled together. And at that point, you know, martial arts can only do so much. Yeah, martial arts, if you both are bare-chested in, in an arena with rules, sure. Uh, but this isn't, this isn't that, you know, the end, you know, in that sort of situation, you've got to assume the worst that people are going to be wearing. Like, what do you do with a martial arts guy that's wearing some sort of riot gear and a motorcycle helmet? What are you going to do against him? Uh, and he's carrying a baseball bat, so two two baseball bats, or a stun gun, or something along those lines, or a chainsaw, or a road flare and some gasoline. People are going to use whatever they can. So the, I don't want to turn this thing into something dark and weird. Uh, just just assume that everything's on the table. If you can think of it, people will use it. What would you do? Again, it's, it's in my survival guide. What would you do if, if the weird stuff happened? You had to defend your home. It was a, it was a thought exercise I put in the survival guide. I said, look, 60 seconds. You hear people coming, coming in the driveway. Your door is locked. What are you going to reach for? Are you going to go to the kitchen knife? Are you going to go for a golf club? Are you going to go for a softball bat? What are you going to grab? And whatever you grab, you better hope the other guy doesn't have a gun. That's why I, do I do I advocate gun violence? No, of course not. Uh, am I a, a huge gun advocate? It varies, varies. Do I think that there's an old saying? I read this in a magazine years and years ago, and that is, "Don't own any more guns than you can carry." You own ten guns. What's that going to do? You're only going to be carrying probably three or four of them, at most. So anyway, this is a digression. So you kind of get what I mean. Martial arts. Eh, 
uh, basic self-defense courses more than anything. Uh, just something to get you in a mental frame of mind. Uh, treat it no different. Uh, honestly, the, the women's courses that they that they take to defend themselves against an average mugger, that, that sort of course would probably be the best right now. I mean, just, just to get you in the, the frame of mind of defending yourself. That's the most important thing of all. It's, it's the mind aspect. You know, the technique, yeah, it's one thing. But remember who you're going up against. So... Okay, moving on. This one's called, Hello, did you receive my previous email sent to you? And literally, and that's that's the extent of it. So I don't know uh, when you send me, if you, I don't think it's a real email. That's not real. This one's called Hurricane Florence. Shows you how far I'm trying to catch up. Mark, funny, Fox News showed a satellite picture of the hurricane today and they made sure to superimpose the fake solar panels of the satellite into the picture. That's from Joe. Yeah. Yep. Reinforcement whenever they can. This one's called Flat Earth South Pole. Hi, Mark. I follow the fantastic work you do regarding the flat earth. I tend to believe the earth is flat, but still searching for answers. I was wondering if you could be so kind to answer a couple of questions I have. I understand that the flat earth map at the South Pole is a wall of ice that extends around the continents, which is why you always reach the ice wall when you head south from the continents. Yes. However, has anyone tried to fly along this fringe of the ice wall? Not that I know of. The reason I, because of the Antarctic Treaty. Uh, the reason I ask is because I re recently watched footage of a plane flying along the ice wall, which seemed relentless. Yeah. If the ice wall is as described by globe theory, then it will be a convex shaped, always falling away from you as you do fly around. But on the flat earth map, it would become concave shaped. The distance of the ice wall should be much longer on the flat earth map. It begs some questions. Is it convex or concave shaped? Has anyone flown the entire distance? Is it possible to do so? What is the distance? No idea. No, they haven't. And I uh, don't know. <coughs> because the Antarctic Treaty protects all of it. Also, another query I have, many people go on about the curvature or not of the horizon from a plane or weather balloon on a disc-shaped flat earth, the horizon would still look curved. Take a Frisbee, for example, hold it out flat and look at the curvature. The top is flat, but you can still see the curvature of the edge. Yes, yeah, I know. If you could see that far, if you could see that far, yes, you, you're absolutely right. If you were looking at a, at a disc, but the thing is, that disc would have we're talking about tens of thousands of miles i don't know it may be i mean maybe you could see the edge of that disc uh but you're also assuming space at that point we just can't see the curvature for the earth because it's too big whether the earth is flat or a globe so i don't understand why it's such a big topic for discussion <laughs> yeah you'll you'll figure it out eventually it's most of it comes down to spirituality which is if you're on a globe then you're nothing you're just this tiny little speck on a ball flying through an endless universe. You mean absolutely nothing. But if it's flat, you mean everything. You are extremely significant. You are important. You're someone. I'd love to hear your thoughts and whether you have any ideas. Kind regards. Keep up the good work. And that's from Wayne Howard. Moving on. This one's called over the polls 2018.com. The domain is gone. Yeah, I should totally... You know what? I'm so glad somebody put this in an email. Uh, Mark, please address this. It indicates the flight was a scam. God, they suck. That's from Boggan. Yeah, uh, if you guys check it out, overthepoles2018.com. I think this is one where Greater Sapien was. He, he got to do the GoFundMe thing, and I think it was like ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 to do the trip. And... It was up there. We were going to go pole to pole, right? And they were even saying that you couldn't bring scientific instrumentation on your own because they knew that flat earthers would eventually book this trip. And then one day uh, back, uh, in fact, really close to 9-11, this email was sent to me on 9-11. Weird. Uh, so did it happen on 9-10 or did it happen uh, first thing in the morning? I don't know. But the website just was gone. That was it. And remember, there were there were news agencies that covered this. It was a kind of an interesting story. And then literally the website just gone. It wasn't like, oh, sorry, delays or we can't do this. They just, it was just the, the site is literally removed. So what happened? Was it a scam? Who put it up there? It looked very professional. I mean, it was very professionally uh, done uh, with lots of detail. And uh, somebody should go back into the... Um, it was the Wayback Machine, the arch the Internet Archive, and take a look at that thing because what happened? So yeah, no pull to pull flights. This one's called Hi Mark. 
Hi, Mark. Sean Thompson here. Just wanted to say a big thank you for the amazing video and great information presented in your title, God's Enclosed Flat Earth Investigation. <laughs> yeah, it's not... It's, it's just another wrapper for the Flat Earth Clues. I don't know at this point. And if anyone out there wants to create a compilation list of all the different channels that are mirroring the Flat Earth Clues, I would love it because... Every time I, I I think I've seen it all, there's somebody out there that's got 500,000, a million, two million. I mean, some of them are up to four and a half million hits. And I, pff, I never even knew. Nobody asked me. I know it's Creative Commons license. They don't have to ask me. But it'd be kind of nice. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, I put it on your my on my channel. And, you know, you're getting the nickels for it. If you want the Flat Earth nickels, by all means, put it out there. Uh, you, it's Creative Commons license. And that's it should be free. So, and, but if you get hits on it, I, I'm pretty sure you get paid for it. And so some of these guys, thousands of dollars. So good for you. Great info. And yes, we all need to stand together on this and end this tyranny. Think we have all have had more than enough now. Yeah, that sentence is not well put together. All the best. And I have shared your video at a very big thank you and well explained. That's from Sean Thompson. Very welcome, Sean. This one's called 12 Slides, Please, Thanks. Again, Mark, that's from Jamie Dyer. This one's called This Beautiful Home. And yeah, I can read this one. Um, M. Sargent, I watched your video, God's Enclosed Flat Earth Investigation, full documentary. Okay, now I got to look this thing up. Parts 1 through 12 on September 11th, 2018. First and foremost, thank you uh, for what I believe is an excellent and very professional presentation of what I understand to be the Bible truth of this created world of ours. Well done. So far, I've distributed the video to many of my friends far and wide, basically because of your presentation is very compelling and does not come across as a lot of the ones I have seen, which make people like us appear to be madmen. Like you, I have been a truth seeker for many decades. I'm 66 years young. As a landscape photographer, I always question the placement of the sun and the moon in relation to each other, and my experience convinced me decades ago that we never went to the moon. For the past 10 years, I have tried to understand the creation story in Genesis and came to the conclusion that the flat earth dome model, a giant snow dome, oh, that's right, they call them snow domes uh, outside of the States, is a more accurate description of our home made by our fantastic creator. You know what? He's not bad. Well, he slash she slash somebody whatever i was especially interested in section 11 about the soul and responsibility of man to his envir environment and to one another like you i believe that the model we both understand with an overlooking creator is the only way to achieve world peace by happenstance i hosted a discussion class about two months ago on exactly the same subject. I wish I had watched your presentation before as you certainly made a more convincing case. Your you presented in an excellent way, far better than I had ever managed to achieve. One question that I have trouble in, it always comes down to this, doesn't it? Everybody says the thing. It's like, oh yeah, but I have one question. I have seen the stars revolving around the northern polar star in time lapse making perfect circles. Trouble is in the southern hemisphere, I also observe a similar phenomenon around the southern pole star, which personally I find difficult to comprehend and throws a bit of a spammer into my current concept. Can you please give it some thought? And I am sure you are one of your fellows with real eyes can give me a satisfactory answer. Yes. Multiple display systems. That's all it is. I mean, it, it breaks apart at the equator. Um, one goes clockwise, the other goes counterclockwise. Uh, that's what you would do in something this large because in something this large, you can kind of cheat and get away with things. Like, remember, one people can only be in one place at one time. So all you do is set up multiple display systems. You have, you have one person on one side and one person on the other. They both think they're looking at the exact same belt of Orion, although they're positioned slightly differently. Uh, no, they're actually looking at completely different belts of Orion, but how would they know any different? Remember, because they can only be in one place at one time. So multiple display systems. It's easy. In fact, with a planetarium, because they're not very big, they're only the size of a small stadium, you only need to do one display system. But if it was really big, even, even if it was 10 miles wide, you could get away with multiple display systems. It's easy. Cake. Not hard at all. Finally, I suspect the edge of the firmament could actually be much further out than 200 miles inland from the circumference of Antarctica, perhaps even thousands of miles. And the dome itself, the firmament, could be several thousands of miles high. Yes, all, yes, absolutely. All these things. I like the idea of other continents beyond the, beyond the ice wall uh, of Antarctica, which could sustain life forms that have wandered into our domain. 
Uh, you get the idea. The attached map is interesting. I'm sure you've seen something like this before. Finally, thank you again for a marvelous presentation. Together we can convince others to get realized to realize all the real lies. Good job, Steve Harrison. And he is in Vietnam. Awesome. All the way to Vietnam. I'm going to put that in my to-do pile because I have to look up this thing. I've, you know, another mirror out there. I've got to figure out where it is. 12, this one's called 12 Slides in a Coast to Coast AM Interview. Hi, Mark. Thanks for so much for what you're doing. Could you please send me the 12 slides in your latest Coast to Coast AM interview? Much peace and thank you, Tom. Yep, happy to do that. This one's called Hurricane Florence Pictures. Pictures, said Caroline. You have to say pictures. You have to enunciate that word. Pictures. Pictures. Mm, I'm still not sold. Hi, Mark. Have you seen the NASA Hurricane Florence pictures? They, the close-up ones, based on the Earth's curve in them, would make the storm about as big as the entire country. NASA even provided a picture of the entire Earth and comparing the close-up ones to the entire Earth, the Earth's curve in the close-up pictures should only have a very slight curve and not a curve that big. Like you and the others say, they're hiding flat Earth and their lies in plain sight. This one's called Your Website Has Opened My Eyes. Hi, Mark. I just found your website. I'm amazed so far. I want to be sure that your email still works. I've been diving down the rabbit hole since 2017. I come from a world where I can't express these things freely or else people will think I'm crazy. I'm so glad that I have found your website. I hope that your email is still operable. Looking forward to a response. Regards, Shanika Adams. Yep, everything still works. In fact, did I write her back? Yes, I did. All right, so we're getting down to the last five minutes of this thing. So let's see if we can find a good one. Uh, this one's called 12 Picks And. Uh, thanks, Mark, for the response. I mean that sincerely. You know, waking up to flat earth, to all the lies of this world, this matrix of slavery can sometimes depress a person and make them feel all alone. I only have one person in my life that I can talk to about flat earth or any conspiracy truth, and he is the one that challenged me about flat earth in the first place. I feel like I need to just be bold with my life and express my newfound understanding of this reality, but it's hard, man. How did you do it? I mean... I don't care if you're connected to the system or just had all the cards fall into your lap or whatever, uh, or a front man for Flat Earth, the biggest, most ridiculous subcultures phenomena ever. How do you talk to your family, uh, your long trusted friends? And at the end of the day, I mean, for Christ's sake, it's to, to me, it's so obvious, so freaking clear that we cannot trust anything. We have been told by government, science, education, media. I'm sorry, my brother. I just feel isolated. And since you have always put your email and phone number out there and you emailed me back the same day I emailed you, I thought maybe you can help. I'm not a subject matter expert or a PhD. I'm a physical therapist and a musician uh, with a wife, kids, two grandkids, and a mortgage. Just trying to figure out this whole thing. Sorry I'm rambling, but thanks, Mark, for being you. Thanks for being open. Thanks for listening. I believe you, Rob Skiba, and Pastor Dean Odell are the true warriors of this movement, and I applaud and support you. If you have any advice on how to proceed from here and share with those around me, please. I'm all yours. Sincerely, Doug. Uh, yeah, look, it's not easy, which is why the the Fight Club reference, you know, the first rule of Flat Club is you do not talk about Flat Club. You have to pick your audience. You have to pick your battles. You can't just rush into this. I know Flat Earth makes everyone really enthusiastic. It's like, I want to tell everybody at Thanksgiving dinner. No, no, no. You'd be better. I, that, that's going to go over like a ton of bricks. You might as well tell them uh, you're a, a gay heroin addict and not nothing against gay people. Like all God's children. I'm not judging. But that's you know people people look at you like you you should be locked up in a mental institution as far as i know nobody has because most people who look into flat earth are, are pretty intelligent but just everything in moderation take it in stride don't freak out don't you know there's a lot of lies out there, yes, but it's just part of this world. This world is based on conflict. There are lies and politics and um, uh, business and sports and entertainment and journalism and science and all that stuff. Everybody lies all the time. Every, even you have lied from time to time. When people get in a position of power, they make bigger lies. That's it. They, they, and they, they make executive decisions and they exploit things because power corrupts. 
That's all. It's it's just how men are wired. Women, not as much, but men definitely. So kind of just kind of, you know, get into the flat earth community. It's better. The, the best part about the flat earth community is when you get involved and talk to a bunch of people that it, it helps, uh, you know, you get it, get involved in the hangouts, go to meetups, go to the conferences. If you can just reach out the, the most flat earthers are so friendly. They're so outgoing because uh, the, the whole concept takes hold of them and, and, and creates this massive wave of enthusiasm in you. And you feel like you're part of a brand new family. And that's, that's where the comfort comes in. There's, you're not alone, not, not by a long shot. 90% not, is not an exaggeration. 90% of the flat earth community is in the closet. I know because I get, there's so many emails I get that I can't even read. I'm just reading the ones that, that they say, oh yeah, by the way, it's okay. You can read this. So, you know, the ones, the people that lots of people write me and they say, please don't read on air. I just want to tell you something. And they're, they're all, it's always the same story. They're people in the closet. They don't know who they can talk to because uh, flat earthers for the most part don't wear badges or special t-shirts or hats or anything. I mean, we've got more of them happening. Uh, but if you're curious and you know what, we'll, we'll end on this one, but let, let's end on a positive note, which is if you're curious about flat earth, uh, and you're and you're trying to get into it for the first t- first time. Find a meetup in your area. Type in Flat Earth Meetup into YouTube, and you'll see tons and tons and tons of Flat Earth. There's, I guarantee you, there's going to be one fairly close to you at this point. We're all over the place in the United States and Canada. I can't necessarily speak for Europe and the Pacific Rim. Uh, because there's just so much happening out there that we don't even know. I mean, there's a flash, uh Russian contingency that I, nobody, we, we don't even have um, crossover in there because nobody speaks Russian. And that's just one language out of many and many, many. So uh, don't, you're not alone. Uh, yeah, your family, uh, I, I'll, I'll, let me end with this. My family, same sort of way. Mom loves it. My sister hates it. Uh, my father, don't know, I really don't talk to him. Um, I've got cousins that will not come out of the closet. I've got other cousins that hate me for it uh, and other co- uh, people that are just indifferent. And there's lots of different reactions from different family members. Choose your audience wisely. And if you have to come at them sideways, come at them, you know, pull up, pull up alongside of them and say, Hey, I, I watched this really weird thing on YouTube about flat earthers. What do you think? Is that weird or what? And if they say, oh yeah, flat earthers should be strung up and killed, then yeah, you probably shouldn't bring it up to them. Or go the other way, which is, you know, go the soft approach, which is the ask them about the moon mission. If they don't believe in the moon mission, then you got a chance. You can might be able to work yourself in. If they absolutely believe that the Apollo moon missions from the Americans was put, is the gospel, it's, it's a real thing, then yeah, you're probably going to have a tough time. All right, let's end it on that one. Ended on kind of a positive go team type of thing. And uh, thank you for everybody that wrote in. Thank you for everybody that's going to write in. And it's okay. I mean, we'll get through that 12 slides glut uh, before too long. Uh, you can email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, stay flat.